At this point, what's your biggest platform, social media wise? TikTok. For sure, I have 1.2 million followers on there. And for time reference, it's November, excuse me, December 2021 now. Mm -hmm. Now, how were you first introduced to TikTok? How did things start exactly? Um, I had a couple of my friends that would say that I would do really well on it. And I didn't join it at first because it just looked like Musical.ly and it didn't seem appealing to me and there weren't a lot of people on it. And then when I joined, you know, my first video did like pretty well. It did 30,000 views for my first video ever. And everything I posted just kept doing well. So I just kept doing it. People enjoyed seeing my videos. Prior to TikTok, did you ever try Musical.ly? Yes. Yes. But I, I didn't do very well on Musical.ly. Why do you think not so well with Musical.ly but better on TikTok. Because I wasn't as cute when I was on Musical.ly. Like, it was kind of cringe. That was when I was in middle school. I wasn't all the way grown up yet. Now, you know, it's just, I feel like I've grown up and there's more of a thing to me, kind of. And just for reference, what middle school did you attend? I went to Russell Middle School. And then I went to Lakeview Academy for one year. Two different middle schools? Two different middle schools, yeah. What was the reason there? Um, part of it was bullying, and then part of it was I just didn't like being in one place for too long. So really, even whenever I was in um, elementary school, around fifth grade up to my senior year, I switched schools probably every year. And, and when it came to the middle school change, what grade was that specifically? Um, I went to Russell for sixth grade, and then I went to Lakeview for seventh grade, and then I came back to Russell eighth grade. The bullying happened at Russell. Happened at Russell and Lakeview, both schools. So whenever it would get hot, I would just kind of dip and then come back whenever it cooled down. Why, uh, okay, in terms of bullying, was it worse at one school versus the other? Yeah, Lakeview was really bad. I mean, it wasn't more so bullying, but it was just like being left out and then being talked about. And it was just drama. It was the worst drama experience I'd ever been in because... The way that school is, like, it's a wonderful school, but they're so tightly knit because it's it's K to 12. So usually the students join in whenever you're really young and you make these connections with everyone. So whenever you try to come in at a later grade and stuff, everyone already has their clicks and not everyone's as accepting and open to new people, if that makes sense. When you went back to Russell, did the bullying stop? Um, it definitely, it wasn't as bad anymore. It was just like snide remarks there and here and there. More so petty drama. And then it relaxed whenever I got to high school. Why do you think it wasn't bad? Why do you think it wasn't as bad in eighth grade when it was in sixth grade for you at that school? Because I used to, I used to start drama. Like, as, as much as I could say I was a victim, I started drama too. So, like, it all just came around. It was just constant drama. Do you think it was karma? A phrase people use? Yeah. I mean, kind of, because I didn't start drama until after drama started with me. So, I guess, a little bit. Now, how would you cope with bullying back then? Um, I would just, I don't know. I didn't really cope. I just, I would get sad. And then I would just kind of bring myself out of it. Because, like, I would get into states for a while, and then I would just be tired of being in those states. And I'm like, okay, girl, you got to get yourself up. And so I would just bring myself out of those places. Obviously, switching schools may have been a remedy. Yeah, that was definitely also what helped me cope. But I didn't know if there was anything else aside from that. Oh, no, there was nothing else aside from that. When, it, when you went on to high school, how was bullying for you at that point? It really stopped. I mean, that was whenever I'd start to grow up more and mature, and I just minded my business more, and I had my group of friends that I would stay with, and people didn't really bother me. Now, there are varying degrees of bullying, and there's different types of bullying. Mm -hmm. Was it a specific type of bullying that you encountered? Um, it was never physical. It was just, like, emotional and mental and sometimes cyberbullying, but... It never got physical. Now, circumstances could be different for everybody. But generally speaking, let's say there's somebody watching this right now that's going through some sort of bullying. Is there anything you would say to them watching? 
based on your past experience. And if not, that's okay, just curious. The reason that people usually try to make you feel bad is because they feel bad about themselves. And a lot of time people try to tear you down in order to bring themselves up. So whenever people come at you a certain way, just know that it's because of personal stuff that they're dealing with. The way people view you is on them. Just keep doing you and you know, you'll find your group eventually. Now, what age were you, if you can recall, when you started TikTok? Um, I think I was like 16, I think. 16, about to be 17. And for people watching this that's getting to know you for the very first time, what is your screen name, username? It's Jay Chanda with two A's, so J-A-Y-D-E-C-H-A-N-D-A-A. -A -A. Now, what's the story with that username? Why the two A's? Um... I had my old Musical.ly accounts because you know how TikTok bought Musical.ly and my old Musical.ly accounts had my name already, my J Tronda. So I just put two A's. Now, why even, uh, let me back up for a sec. Is this your real name? Jade, yes. First and middle, first and last. J Tronda, yeah, that's my first and last name. Now, why use your real name for social media? Some people don't. They use an alias or a nickname or something of that nature. Honestly, that's what that's what my real dad he used to try and get us to use aliases online so you don't get your identity stolen. But I just wanted, like, if I, if I was going to end up doing well on social media, I would want it to be, like, I would want people to know my name. You know what I'm saying? Not like any Hannah Montana situation. I want them to know me. Now, did he find out you were going by your real name on social media? Yes. He did find out, and he was upset, but, I mean, it's not really his place to say anything at this point. Did that cause a rift between your relationship with him? No, not that. Now, what type of content do you provide with your profile at this point? On TikTok? Yes. Um, I post funny, relatable videos. I do a lot of collabs with other influencers. I do a lot of the just corny, you know, just taking videos of yourself looking good. And, and I do some dances, but barely, but that's about it. What's your creative process behind your videos? Um, sometimes, I, I mean, it's really, ins like, I get inspired by what I see on my For You page. So I, like, say videos, and I'm like, okay, I want to do something like this. And if there's a sound that I hear that I know I could, like, make a joke out of, I'll take the video and just record, or I won't record it, but, like, I'll just take a video and write down the idea on top of it and then save the sound, and then later... When I'm in the environment to film it, I'll do it. On the opposite end of the spectrum, have people been inspired by your videos? I think so, yeah. I've gotten some DMs where people tell me that I inspire them, my videos help. How do you feel about that? It makes me feel good, you know, to know that someone out there is looking up to me. You don't feel like that's copycatting or... Copycatting what? When, when people are inspired by your videos. Oh, I mean... Maybe take something you do, write it down, jot it, like you kind of described and... Yeah, like, I mean, if it's like the exact same concept, yeah, that annoys me. I hate being copied, but like being inspired is like whenever you can see their content and then put your own kind of twist on it. I don't mind whenever people do that, but I hate like copying thing for thing. Now, has that ever created a rift in the TikTok world for you where somebody you were inspired by may have nudged you or even called you out for copycatting something? No, there's been times that I don't give credits and then there'll be an army of people in my comments, tag them, tag them, but that's about it. What's your opinion on that? I mean, I think if you create something, you should get credits, but a lot of the times whenever things are viral, no one really knows who the original creator is because so many different people have done it. So it can be annoying sometimes, but it is well-deserved to have your credit. Do you give credit at this point, or? Yeah, when it's due, I'll give credit. Now, what makes a good, excuse me, what makes a good TikTok video for you? What are those ingredients? Um, I think my curly hair, ideally a bathing suit, and a nice face of makeup. That usually does well. I'm just standing in the camera. Now, you have 1.2 million on TikTok as far as a following. Mm -hmm. What does that feel like 
to have at least a million followers. There's somebody watching this right now, not even close, wondering what does that feel like? I mean, it doesn't feel that different. I know if I was looking at my profile when I was in like sixth grade, I would definitely be like, damn. But like now that you kind of have it, like it just, not that I'm not thankful for it, but it kind of motivates you to want to go higher. It's kind of addicting to keep climbing after you've reached a certain point. But it feels nice. Speaking of addiction, are you addicted to social media? Yes, I can say that for a fact, I am. Now, when it comes to having this million, is that a sense of power? It is, yeah, because when it, it is whenever people are looking at, whenever people are judging you off of your social media and first impressions, usually the bigger the number, the more people are gonna kind of kiss, not that I want it, but people tend to kind of kiss your ass more whenever you're higher up there. In what ways? What's an example? Like, they just, they're always nice to you, like, ungenuinely nice, you know, and they just always, you can tell, I don't know, you can just tell whenever someone's ingenuine. When you did cross that million mark, did you celebrate? Yes, I did celebrate. How'd you do it? I had a little party, a little, well, it wasn't a party. It was like a small kickback with some of my friends. Was it something you took to TikTok Live with? No, I did not, which I probably should have, but no, I didn't. Sometimes when people do cross that million mark on TikTok, they go live. Mm -hmm. Maybe they do a special video. Yeah. Maybe even bribe, in a sense, I use that word loosely, mm -hmm. their fan base to say, hey, if you hit this million mark, I got something special I'll release. Yeah, I probably should have done that. I didn't, I wasn't the smartest. I should have monetized a lot more. How long did it take for you to get to that million? Rough um, estimate. Probably about a year and a half, two years. What's your second biggest following on a social media platform? I see my Instagram. That's at um, 279,000 right now. Do you remember what age you were when you joined IG? I was young when I joined Instagram. I was like straight whenever I was 13, I joined Instagram. Okay, so let's break this down for a sec. You started Instagram at 13, you start TikTok at 16, but you reach a million on TikTok faster than you do on Instagram. Yeah, I feel like TikTok followers are a lot easier to get um, Instagram, a lot harder to get, for sure. What do you think drove your following on TikTok to a million? What's the secret? Um, I was in, I was in a, a TikTok house for a while, and so there were a lot of other creators there that had a lot more followers than me, and so they have, like, these super strong fan bases, and so whenever I would post videos with them, their fans would be like, oh, well, they hang out a bunch. I want to see more of that. I want to see more of them. So then they would come and follow me. And so we were constantly collabing. So I would say that the key to growing that fast was just the people that I collabed with that year. That really helped get my name out there. Now, when it comes to collaboration, how do you decide who you collaborate with? I mean, usually I can feel people's vibes before. Like, I'll talk to you for a little bit. And then, um, you know, if I feel like I haven't, I haven't really like gone out of my way to collaborate with someone that I've met online, except for my friend Tatiana recently. Uh, usually you just kind of run into people. You just kind of run into them. Have you collaborated with people with a less of a following than you at the time? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. And I imagine you've collaborated with people with a higher following than you. Mm -hmm. Now, this TikTok house that you mentioned, what's the status with you in that house at this point? It's not, I mean, I'm still cool with everyone in there. Um, some, of the, some of the people are not as keen with each other, but um, we're not active anymore because everyone, our goals just were not, we weren't all on the same page. Some people were still in school. Some people were not able to move to Atlanta because it's hard to do things like that whenever we're not all in the same area and able to be with each other constantly. 
And we've talked about so many things, so pardon my memory here, but you joined this house or you helped create this house? Oh, no. Someone offered for me to come join and I came and joined. How long do you think you joined it for? I was in, the, we were probably in there for a year. It was um, June 20, it was, yeah, it was June 2020 until, up until that next, probably January. Well, not January, but like it was a year and then some change up to the January. So it was a little over a year. Care to share the name of that house? Yeah, Valid Crib. What was that like? It was, it was fun. It was a lot of drama at times, but it was fun and it was a lot of memories to be made. Now, when it comes to drama, we've talked about that previously. Was this drama that you initiate or drama you find yourself involved in? I mean, I wasn't involved in drama because I told myself at the beginning that I was not going to be anything other than friends with any of the guys in the house because that's usually how drama is created and that is how most of the drama came to be with girls and guys that were doing stuff. And... um. It wasn't me. I was never, I was never, I never initiated the drama. That's what I'm trying to say. But I was involved because I'd have both sides talking to me. But I would stay neutral and mind my business, you know. So just for the record, all the relationships with males in that house was strictly platonic for you. Oh, yeah. Yes. Now, aside from collaborating... Did you have any other strategy when it came to going to that million mark? Um, just, I don't know, consistency. I tried to post a lot, and I tried to put out different types of videos to see which ones would do well and which ones wouldn't, and I stuck to the ones that did well. And which ones for you was that? The ones where I was in a bathing suit, the light skin kind of videos where you're just feeling yourself. Sometimes my funny videos, and then... Um, the, yeah, the joke, like dark humor, some of those would go up. Did you have a quota when it came to being consistent? What, like how many times I should post a day? Yes, or mm -hmm. a week or that sort of thing. Not really. I tried to post every day, but, I mean, if I didn't post, there would be times where I didn't post for like a week. And, you know. When you did post, was there always a certain time you posted? I try to post in the evening and the nighttime because that's when most people are on their phones, like after dinner and before bed. Now, when you came up with that decision-making there, was that based on your analytics or is that just common sense? Um, I think it's just common sense. That's what I've been doing for so many years. I always post on social media at night. Do you ever look at your analytics? Do you ever use that into some sort of strategy at all? Not on TikTok, but on Instagram. I do, yes. When it comes to this million-plus following count, do people ever question your number of followers? Um, not really. I've never had anyone question it. Sometimes I know whenever my views get low, because TikTok will shadow ban me, and then they'll shadow ban my my views for a while. And so I would think people, like, looking at my page will look and be like, damn, she has a million, 1.2 mil, and she'll need getting, like, 20, 30,000 views. You know, I can see how that would look that way. But no one's ever said anything to me about it. Ever bought a follower on TikTok? No. What is your opinion on that, people buying followers? I'm not going to lie. When I was in, like, sixth grade, I used to buy my – and I didn't buy my Instagram followers, but, like, I would do follow for follow. I would be on those apps and the like for like apps, and I would do that. And then once people, like, thought that my page was doing well and they thought that I was getting all these likes, they just started to come in organically, and I stopped. When it comes to TikTok, what is the best way? to grow organically? I think finding a video that no one has done yet, not no one has done yet, but just a very unique video that you can do or a type of genre or comedy. Maybe I'm saying that wrong, but like just find something that does well for you and stick to it and just keep riding that wave while you have it. Having a million followers on a social media platform, period, regardless of what platform it is, is that surprising to you at all that you've reached that? Yeah. Whenever I really sit back and think about it, I know it's hard to think about sometimes whenever you're just living in it every day, but stepping back, it is a large amount that I do take for granted sometimes.
When it comes to being surprised, is it the amount of the followers or is it the time it took to get to that amount? Both, I think, yeah. Now, for those watching that have a TikTok themselves and haven't reached a million yet, wanting to know, is there a difference you saw when you crossed different humps of followers? So, for example, when you were at the 250 mark, when you were at the 500 mark, mm -hmm. 750, then a million. Did you notice anything different when you were at those intervals? Yeah, honestly, like 200K up to like probably six or 700K, you gain really rapidly. And then um, once you get higher up in numbers, it is a bit harder to gain followers because people just don't feel like they have a need to follow you because you already have so many. And so you get a lot of traffic from people that don't follow you rather than people that do. Is it a higher level of well-known, famous, or celebrities in your DMs crossing those marks? Oh yeah, definitely. Favorite person you met so far off of TikTok? Um... And when I say meet, it can be physically mm -hmm. or digitally or, you know, maybe some sort of was, relationship in any sort of capacity. But favorite person you met so far off of TikTok? I would probably say Tatiana. Tatiana Joseph. She just came into Atlanta last week and we met probably, this was for the second time. It was our first time, like, hanging out. And she is super sweet and I can see me being really good friends with her. And she initially reaches out to you, you reach out to her. How did that start? We had been following each other and we didn't really, like we would comment on each other's videos and then she came to a Valid Crib event that we were having. And um, yeah, we just met each other that way and just stayed cool since. On your way to a million, have there been some people that you reached out to that didn't respond back then reaching out to you now? Uh, I don't know if you were one to do that. I don't, I mean, I definitely, I do reach out to guys, but like, I don't think that there's anyone that hit me back after I got numbers, no. Usually if they didn't respond, there's definitely people that have hit me up after I've gotten numbers, but I don't know if they ever knew who I was before that. Reaching out to guys for personal reasons or collaboration reasons or what? I mean... I would try to shoot my shot sometimes. Not necessarily to collab, but I'll use that as a way to start a conversation. Now, when it comes to shadow banning, which mm -hmm. is something you mentioned earlier in this conversation, how do you know you're actually shadow banned? Because TikTok will send you a notification telling you that you got one of your videos removed and then it'll say, oh, you're banned from commenting, posting, doing all this other stuff till this date. And usually it's like a week. And um, then whenever you do get back on, they put your views really, like they're dramatically, like dramatically drop. And it's just obvious. And then after maybe like another week of posting consistently, then it'll start to go back up. But usually they keep it very low the time being. When it comes to your followers, again, 1.2, do you notice more love or more hate? I'm, I notice more love, but there's definitely a lot of hate. A lot of hate. Do you have fan pages on TikTok? Um, probably a few. I haven't seen them yet, but I know a lot of people make edits of me. What's your opinion on that? I like it. I think that's cool. I just always want to edit whenever I was younger. So it's cool that people make them of me now. Do you ever grab them and repost them yourself? Or? Oh, yeah, the cute ones. Yeah, I definitely show love. I show love to all of them, but I'll repost the ones that are popping. Aside from fan pages, do you have fake pages impersonating you on TikTok? Um, yes, a couple on TikTok, but a lot on Instagram. How were you able to tell the difference between a fan page and a fake page? Because fan pages, like, you know, they don't try to act like they're me. You can tell whenever a fake page has different names and they have captions and stories acting like me, trying to crop my 
certain tags out of my picture. So it's pretty easy to tell. How do you deal with fake pages impersonating you? I just report them. You got it taken down. Does that work? Yeah. Have you ever had to take it further? Like getting the police involved, an attorney involved? No. Usually Instagram, because they have a certain feature on there that will, can say this page is impersonating me, and they act on that pretty quickly. Now let's talk money a little bit. Mm -hmm. Back to TikTok. How do you earn money off of TikTok? Um, you can either join the Creator Fund, which I was in there for a little bit, but it makes your views go lower. So I exited out. And then also brand deals that want you to promote their stuff on your page on TikTok. Biggest amount of money you seen from the Creator Fund when you were part of it? Probably like $500. I didn't stay in it too long. And that was in one month's time? A one month check? Maybe like one or two months. When it comes to promos, do you do them? Yeah, I do a lot of promos. And is that basically just people contacting you, asking you to do that sort of thing? Yeah, brands will reach out and ask me to promote either their clothing, jewelry, or people could want me to promote their music on there. It's just whatever people want, really. Do you accept any type of promo, or are you selective on what you're willing to post? Um, I'm pretty selective. Like, I've had some sex toys reach out to me, and I don't really want that image on my profile, so I'll decline that, stuff like that. Anything else when it comes to what you decide whether, whether or not you would? I mean, if it's, like, an obvious, like, boring product, like, I'm not going to post a vacuum on my page, you know what I'm saying? knowing that I have people that follow me for fashion. Is money through TikTok, whether it's the creator fund or, or, you know, side deals that you receive, is that profitable? Oh, yeah. You, that's, that's, that's a living right there. Now, let's take TikTok out of the equation. Do you make a full-time living off of social media at this point? Yes. Okay, if I had a 100% pie chart, what percentage does TikTok contribute out of that full-time living off of social media? Probably like 30%, because I'm making streams of income through four different platforms, so that's probably 20% or 30%, yeah. Just curious, that is the most followers you have on a social media platform. But out of that pie, is there a platform giving you more than 30%? Yeah. Um, Instagram, Snapchat, and my OnlyFans all make me really good money. Speaking of OnlyFans, what are you posting on your OnlyFans? Um, you're just going to have to subscribe to see. And for those watching that want to subscribe, what is that username or screen name? Um, I think it's, it's the same as my TikTok. It's Jade Chanda with two A's. Now back to TikTok. I'm wrapping up my questions here with that. Okay. Are you verified? Got the blue check? No, they won't give me the blue check because they say I've violated too many guidelines. Ever been disabled on TikTok? Like, had my account deleted? Yeah. No. But I've been banned, but not disabled. Banned? What do you mean? Banned is like whenever you can't post and you can't Oh, shadow comment. banned. Shadow banned. Oh, yeah. yeah. Got you. All right. Yeah. I guess that's the same thing, ain't it? I mean, no, shadow banned is like whenever they keep your views away from you, and then being banned is whenever you're unable to do the functions of the app. So just for clarification, you've been banned and shadow banned or just shadow banned? Yeah, they go hand in hand. You get banned first, and then when you're unbanned, you're shadow banned. You did mention that. <laughs> okay. Anything else I didn't ask you when it comes to TikTok? Um, wait, 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 wait. Sorry, I have a few more questions no, go ahead. about TikTok. I, I went a little too far. 
ahead of myself, so forgive me. Okay, if you could turn back the hands of time, would you have done anything different in regards to your TikTok? No, I don't think so. Yeah, I think I've, I would do everything the same way. What do you wish you knew before you got this big in TikTok, relatively speaking? What do I wish I knew? Yeah. Is there anything you look back and say, man, I wish I would have known that? Um. If anything. I don't really think there's much. Just be, people are hypersen very hypersensitive on TikTok, so you can't really talk about touchy subjects or else you run the risk of being canceled. So, just that. Care to share any examples of a touchy subject? Um... Maybe things you won't touch or delve in yourself? I mean, yeah, I mean, I'll talk about, I really think that there's a big argument, not even a big argument, but there's a big thing between black people and white people and saying that, you know, black people can't be racist. And like, there's a lot of, like, obviously there's racism, I'm gonna put this in the best words possible, but like, there's a lot of times where people will post videos just completely like trashing white people and being like, oh, this is white people things. And I saw this one live, which really brought me to that conclusion where this guy was in there and maybe he was just joking around, but this white guy joined his live and he just started flipping out. He's like, oh, hell no, I can't have no Caucasian. There's no white people allowed on this page. If you're white, you can't follow me. You can't do this, that, and the third. And it's just like, it's just unnecessary because if, a white person would have said it, it would have been taken into like a whole different perspective and stuff. And so I just think that both parties can be racist and it's impossible for someone to just not, well, it's not impossible for someone to not be racist. Yes, both people can be racist. That's what I think. Don't cancel me. Any other subjects you won't touch? Um. <laughs> No, I think we're just going to stick with this one for now. Do you consider yourself TikTok famous? Um, I would if I would if I was younger looking up to myself, but I don't really consider <clears throat> myself famous now. No. What do you want people watching this interview to know about TikTokers? Everyone puts on an act, you know. People show you what you want you to see, and ha half of y'all's favorite influencers are dickheads and not who they act like they are on social media. Now, circumstances could be different for everyone, but generally speaking, any tips, any tricks, any advice for someone with a TikTok right now watching this? Um, just get, stay consistent, you know, and Usually whenever there's two people in a video, it's more likely to go well. And the shorter the sound, the better it'll do. And that's really it, I think. Anything else you wanna, this is my last question. Anything else you wanna mention about TikTok or question I didn't ask, people wanna know about it? Um, no, I think we've got everything. <laughs>